Hello, we have a quick exam tune-up for you uh, related to most course WQ5, which is on the total coliform rule. The importance of pathogens in drinking water cannot be overstated. Unfortunately, we can't measure pathogens directly in our water supply, and instead we rely on two key means of indirectly assessing the safety of our water from a pathogen standpoint. The first way is we've identified an indicator organism, one that if present tells us the water is potentially unsafe to drink and that the water is safe to drink if this indicator is absent. That indicator is coliform bacteria. And this indirect means of assessing microbiological quality of the water is encoded in a regulation that we'll look at in just a moment. The other indirect indicator is embodied in another regulation. It is the CT calculation. The first regulation and the subject of this quick video is the total coliform rule. The second uh, regulation direct, directed at pathogen safety is the surface water treatment rule and we'll have a, a video on that shortly. So here are our top it's actually 11 questions. Here's number one. Are individual pathogens regulated with maximum contaminant levels? And the answer is no. We don't have that technology today. Otherwise, we certainly would be looking for individual pathogens and would have established MCLs for each of them. What is the standard measurement for microbiological quality of drinking water? That is coliform bacteria. What is the MRDL for free chlorine? That's the maximum residual disinfectant level. And the regulations limit us to four parts per million or milligrams per liter. What is the most common bacteria found in the human intestine? That is E. coli, Escherichia coli. You've got approximately a trillion of them in your intestine right now. Uh, that's right, a trillion. What is the term for bacteria that can live with or without oxygen? These are facultative bacteria. Aerobic with oxygen, anaerobic without. What is the MCL for coliform bacteria in a distribution system? Well, this is a little bit of a trick question because there is no MCL per se for coliform bacteria. That's why we put the MCL in quotes. What we have is 5%. That is what we can tolerate. Anything beyond that is a violation of the total coliform rule. And that's 5% in a month of routine samples. What are the three steps in the MPN method? That is the most probable number method, also known as the multiple tube fermentation method. And the three steps are the presumptive test, the confirmed test, and the completed test. And these are done in sequence. What is the product of lactose fermentation? There are actually two products, one of them being water, but the important one is carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and we can see the gas bubbles forming if lactose fermentation is taking place. What is the special ingredient in the confirmed test. Lactose is present, but so is brilliant green bile. That is an inhibiting agent that slows down coliforms, but pretty much shut down, shuts down other types of bacteria. So it helps us to 
uh, differentiate between coliforms and non-coliform bacteria. What are the three methods used for measuring coliforms? There are three approved methods. Uh, you can use whichever one of the three happens to make the most sense for your organization, but those methods are the multiple tube fermentation test, the co-alert test, and the membrane filtration test. Which of these three uses MMO mug? Well, that's the special ingredient in the co-alert test. It's what causes the uh, uh, co-alert sample vial to turn yellow in the presence of uh, total coliform bacteria. If you didn't get all these questions right, you might want to uh, come to MOST, www.mostwatertrain.com, and take our one-hour video on the total coliform rule and measurement of coliforms. That is our water quality uh, video number five. It is about one hour long, like all of our videos, and it will help you be prepared for those total coliform rule questions on the certification exams.